Building a rocket is really, really hard. Well, no fucking shit. And one of the hardest parts of building a rocket is, of course, the engine. This is what's powering your rocket and allowing it to get to the destination that you want it to go. For our Rocket Karma, this is certainly no exception. We have a propulsion testing campaign coming up in which we're going to be testing the Karma engine to see if it's performing the way we expect. And as you might imagine, there's a lot that we have to do in order to prepare for this. Now you may have seen some of our earlier videos that discuss some of the things that are going to be involved in this propulsion test, which include our injector and also our rocket nozzle. But there's of course more to the propulsion testing than just those two pieces. There's like a hundred parts that we have to put together and make sure that they're working properly. So we designed a series of small little tests and integrations that we're going to perform in-house before we actually go to the test site. And we kind of wanted to share that process with you so you get an idea of what it takes to really get yourself ready for a propulsion test. Because after all, it takes a long time to get from here to here. Once we'd finally manufactured all of our parts for the testing campaign, we decided to put it all together on my balcony. <laughs> right, yeah, of course. This was just an initial integration to make sure that everything was fitting together properly and working the way that we expected. This included the stand itself, which is supposed to be able to withstand the force of the rocket firing and also be able to record some data, and the combustion chamber, which of course is where the combustion is happening. First, we started the integration with a little device that we call the flux capacitor. Flux capacitor. It's designed to house three force sensors, which are arranged in a triangular fashion in order to record data from the propulsion. And we call it the flux capacitor because if you've watched Back to the Future, you know, it kind of looks like a flux capacitor. This is what makes time travel possible, the flux capacitor. The way this part works is that the flux capacitor is housed to the stand itself. And then the four sensors are designed to go on it at each of the edges of the triangle. And then there's a plate that attaches to our bulkhead, which sandwiches the sensors between the plate and the flux capacitor. This is how the force sensors record data. They basically figure out how much force is sandwiching them together and give a reading that way. We have just integrated the flux capacitor, which is what provides the backbone for the sensor to push against and kind of give a good reading. And it all looks to be installed quite nicely. Basically, we're just screwing it in with uh, regular M10 screws and we're using these washers to act as spacers so that we can kind of line up the plate to be as flat as possible. So with the flux capacitor all installed, it was on to the middle bulkhead. This of course is specially designed to interface with the stand and the plate itself, but it's also designed to interface with our casing, which is gonna go over top of it, and also our injector. Here you can see us integrating the funnel and the injector onto that middle bulkhead. The middle bulkhead was supplied to us by one of our sponsors, Evite, and they did an excellent job of making sure that it was designed to the tolerances we needed in order to make this work. And here you can see just how well our injector and that middle bulkhead actually fit together. We're just integrating now, and you can see we have done a very good job of drilling these outer holes. They all line up perfectly with our middle bulkhead, which we had machined externally. Nice. So maybe we're almost turning into machinists. You also may notice a sensor which is protruding out of our injector and it's designed to sense the combustion chamber pressure. A lot of the sensors that we're using during this test come from another one of our sponsors, Kistler. They're supplying us the four sensors. Those are the ones that are getting sandwiched onto the flux capacitor. Also pressure sensors, which we're putting onto our injector and also another one that's on the middle bulkhead upstream of the injector. And they've also supplied us a couple of acceleration sensors that we want to place onto the combustion chamber casing itself. We also have two other sensors that are on our stand. One of them is supplied to us by another sponsor, Coolite. It's a pressure sensor that's also on the middle bulkhead. And we also have a thermocouple, which is installed onto our injector. This is just to check what the temperature on the injector is, because we kind of want to figure out if we're going to switch to an aluminum injector in the future. So we want to see just how hot that injector plate's actually getting. Once the funnel and the injector plate are all hooked up onto the middle bulkhead, it's time to install the combustion chamber casing. This is the part that we've actually manufactured ourselves. It's just a steel tube, which has been wound over with carbon fiber, which actually makes it really, really strong. It's really over-engineered for its purpose. It could probably be a lot lighter, but we're kind of operating on the philosophy that we want things to 100% work for this test. It should be able to contain any pressure that we see. Now you may have noticed that we actually attached an insulation looking thing onto our injector with hot glue. 
Are you sure about that? This is just a part that's going to allow us to interface our propulsion grain with the injector. And of course it needs to be insulative because that's actually functioning as the inside of the combustion chamber. Now, don't worry, we're not gonna actually use hot glue for the propulsion test. This is just being used as a way for us to interface it right now to make sure everything fits. We have a plan for much stronger stuff in the future. Now we kind of have a special way of dealing with our combustion chamber because our casing is much wider than it needs to be for the actual size of a rocket that we're building. Our combustion chamber casing is actually 250 millimeters wide. And this is because we kind of want to make things all sized up for transcendence in the future, which is the rocket that's going to go all the way to space. But we're not building that right now. We're building a small rocket called Karma. So we don't need that 250 millimeter diameter for our combustion chamber. We actually need a diameter that's more like 160 millimeters. So what we end up having is a inner combustion chamber, which is that 160 millimeters. And we have to have structures to adapt out to that 250 millimeter diameter of our casing. But for that inner combustion chamber, you already saw previously that we have that insulation that's being attached to the injector. The next part of that is the fuel grain, which is going to be inserted into that insulation. And we kind of have this nifty method of doing that in a way that makes sure that it's going to be pressure tight. And then after that, the nozzle insulation actually slots into the bottom of the grain in the same way that the top of the grain went into the injector insulation. And then the nozzle is kind of pushed together and that sandwiches that grain inside to make sure that that combustion chamber stays contained. Now you may have noticed that the outside of our grain is all spun inside of a PVC tube. And I don't know if you've ever played around with PVC tubes that are 160 millimeters in diameter, uh, they can't contain the 30 to 40 bar of pressure that we expect to have in the propulsion test. Uh, usually PVC tubes only get up to about 15 or 20 bar. So obviously we need to have some way to strengthen that PVC tube so that we can contain the pressure that we're expecting inside of our chamber. For this, we actually designed a special type of device called the spacer ring, which we're going to insert into the casing. Uh, this ring is basically has an inner ring, which is 160 millimeters in diameter, but it has these little pedals that take the force of the PVC tube and transmit it to the casing. And we have 13 of these rings that are placed into the casing and they basically cover the entire surface of the PVC in order to make sure that all of the structural loading that goes onto that PVC tube will actually go through the rings and eventually to the combustion chamber casing. Now this may be a little bit of an unorthodox approach to building a combustion chamber, but we kind of, again, are trying to keep the philosophy of keep everything the same as it would be for transcendence so that essentially on transcendence, everything is already built and we can just move forward from there. To adapt this out to transcendence, we basically just remove the rings and put in a bigger fuel grain. And for our first integration, everything worked actually pretty well. You can see here that we managed to connect all of the pieces and everything was fitting actually quite nicely. So the next step after this is, well, we got to test to make sure that the pressure can be held by this combustion chamber. But how do you pressure test the combustion chamber? After all, there's kind of a big hole in it, which is the nozzle. Well, for this, we had to kind of create a plug which we could put over top of the nozzle so that we could create a pressure test. Our plug wasn't that sophisticated. It was essentially just a slab of steel that we put over top of the nozzle insulation with a little bit of an O-ring to make sure that it was all watertight. But pressure testing didn't go as easily as we would have hoped. It's pressure good. test. Mark, I don't know, something higher than one. Go oh, slowly, slowly, slowly. Take it easy. Call out pressure as you go. 2.5. Is water coming? 3.5. Yeah, there's water from? coming from the bottom. From the bottom? Mm. Our seal ah, on the, the bottom. Ah, the seal on the yeah, bottom. Is... Bottom's not good. Keep going. Just slowly. 2.5. 2.5, yeah. yeah. Okay, now it's like equal. It's not coming from the seal. See was down there, it's coming from the top. Yeah, okay. Stop for a second. Wait, where did it come from? It's shooting off of the thing at you. Okay, I you think... See what's happening? It's shooting off of the... See how something is spraying on? It's spraying from there. From the pipe. <laughs> from the pipe. Oh, it's not actually leaking then, maybe. Uh, is this leaking? Maybe. No, I mean, it's just spraying know. against here. It's like spraying see. water there. Okay, just no, give me a second. It's That's so funny. <laughs> like it's leaking. 
we just see what exactly how it's spread. Pressure testing again for the too many times time. <laughs> Instantly. <laughs> it's like not even. <laughs> not even close. <laughs> okay, ready? Yeah. Let's go. Ah, it's working. 1.7. Nothing's dripping. Keep going. Uh, what are you at right now? 2.5? Uh, it's leaking from the funnel. What the fuck? Oh, the pressure sensor is leaking. Jesus Christ, honestly. Shit. Do we put Teflon tape onto it? No. No. Yeah. <laughs> well, wait, did we not? Wait, why not? I don't know. We forgot about putting it on. No, we told you yesterday. You no, we, it put we, put it on today, we put it on today, though. We put it on today. You put it on today, okay? Yeah. yeah. Stop there for a second. Yeah. Is that coming out of the seal? That's out of the pressure sensor. That's out of something else. Oh, that's out of our... <laughs> it's out of our bottom. <laughs> All of our lids are not working. Out of the Wait, bottom thing. As before, I think. Yeah, because we only have that. We only have that because of the thing. Think also, what was better before is that before you just put it on this side, this was also, and the whole weight was pressing onto this thing here, right? Mm -hmm. Also. And uh, this is terrible, so it doesn't make a big difference. But well, we had also had the flow control there before, so. So we were finally able to track down the source of all this leaking that we were having during our pressure testing. It turns out that the connection between the injector insulation and the injector was not good. Now, I mentioned before that we had used hot glue in order to attach these two parts during the integration test. We weren't using hot glue in the end. Instead, we were using epoxy, more specifically, five minute epoxy. But it turns out the five minute epoxy is not very good at acting as an axial type of seal. It's very brittle and if it just gets a crack in it or something, which is pretty easy in the configuration that we have our combustion chamber, because of course, if our combustion chamber expands even a little bit, it's probably gonna break at that location. So we decided to switch our design around a little bit. Instead of having a glued connection at that location, we thought, why don't we just screw it together and put in a little bit of a gasket? This way we can be sure that it's definitely not going to leak there. We actually also added silicon to this in order to be triple sure that it's not leaking at this point. And then it was just a matter of putting it back to the test. The last thing that we had to check before we went to the propulsion testing was our igniter system. After all, it's no good to go all the way to the propulsion test site and then have the embarrassing situation where you can't get your rocket to ignite. Embarrassing! <laughs> so, to avoid this, we decided to do some testing on our igniter. And our igniter system is fairly simple. We're just using solid rocket motors in order to ignite this hybrid rocket. We plan to ignite these solid motors two seconds before we have the nitrous oxide flowing into our combustion chamber. And the heat that's generated by those solid rocket motors should be enough to get the paraffin wax and the nitrous oxide burning. In this case, those three solid motors are just going to be epoxied to the fuel grain. To test this, we actually just used one of our older grains that we spun some months ago. Uh, we've actually spun a bunch more now, we have like six of them, and they're all looking really nice. But this is an older one, so we could kind of wreck it for the purposes of testing our igniters. As you can see, we definitely have more than enough heat to get this rocket going, so we're pretty confident about our igniter system. With our igniter system working properly, it's back to the pressure testing, because this combustion chamber has to be able to take 30 bar of pressure at least. Three, two, one, go.
we are now looking at the post analysis of our uh, tank combustion chamber. Uh, we got up to 25 bar and then we lost pressure. And we first were concerned that the ring had maybe loosened or something or something had happened there. But you can see that the mark that marks where we tightened it to is exactly the same. So the combustion chamber should have been sealed. But then when we flip over to the other side, there's a point where we're plugging off the nozzle and we're using uh, this little piece here to do that. So this basically sits over with the nozzle orifice and it sits on this aluminum piece like this and gets pressed in. And we have this little gasket, which is closing off the nozzle orifice. But obviously, if the aluminum bar is getting deformed like this, that pressure is not being held fully. <laughs> so we think what happened is basically this aluminum deformed at about 25 bar to this point where there was no longer a seal being made with this gasket, and then we lost pressure. So overall, I would say that this was a successful test because the thing that failed was actually the setup itself and not the combustion chamber. So positive news, I guess. So in the end, we weren't really able to create a test situation in which we were able to test all the way up to 30 bar. As you can see, our pressure testing apparatus kind of broke at 25 bar, but at least the combustion chamber itself is not breaking. So it seems reasonable that because it could withstand 25 bar, it could probably get all the way up to 30 bar. And as I mentioned before, we were kind of running out of time at this point. So it's time to just put it to the test. Be sure to stay tuned for the results of that testing because it's coming soon. If you enjoyed the video, be sure to leave a like and remember to expand your horizons.